I'm gonna start on the inside of the STI project. First, we're gonna put this iDoing Android 12 nine inch head unit. Um, iDoing is pretty new on the scene, but they have been around for a while. They have uh, head units for Japanese cars, Korean cars, American cars, universal cars, German cars. Um, and for the price, it's actually a pretty good product. I do have a link in the description down below for a discount code, so please check that out. This, uh, for about $400-ish for the 2002 to 2007 uh, Impreza, has Android 12. The best thing about these units, 100% wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, which is an absolute game changer when you're coming from something that's, well, almost 20 years old. Uh, it also has uh, built-in navigation if you want to do that and you don't want to use your CarPlay. OEM factory cameras, it supports. You can do a backup camera into this as well. Um, a QLED touchscreen display. Um, uh, very heavy EQ settings if you want to you know, change the sound. Touchscreen, uh, built-in Bluetooth, hands-free phone book options, Bluetooth music, 32 equalizer digital signal processing. It does so much stuff. And um, today we're going to open it up, go through it, install it, and let you guys know what we think. We have some nicely packaged items. Lots of foam, lots of protection, wonderful. Uh, there will be, I'm sure, a ton of wiring harnesses. I love when they put the little trim tools in here. Um, they're cheap, you can buy them online, but when they come with the unit, that is a bonus. So, all of this is just the wiring. We'll go take that all out and go through it. And here is the actual head unit. Now this comes with everything you need to install it, including the faceplate. Everything is included. You don't have to buy it. Including the wiring harness as well. Nice, small, compact unit. Now that CDs don't have to go in the units, they get smaller and smaller, which is great. Looks like a very, feels like a high quality piece to me. Everything's nice and finished. All the factory clips should go into place. You might have to take some of the clips from the uh, factory unit and put them on here so that it holds in place. Looks nice. Looks like a 24 month manufacturer warranty. Excellent. A uh, couple QR codes for installation if you need it. Most of it's pretty self explanatory though. Current audio unit in the car is not exactly high tech. It is aftermarket. Looks like a Jensen, which came with a very annoying magnet that sticks to the top of the roof. It must be the satellite navigation unit. Control antenna, I don't know, but it has to go. After disconnecting the battery, you're going to need to remove the old stuff. First, you gotta pull off this bottom trim to get to some of the screws for the top trim. Be careful, this is your baby. If you ruin something, you're gonna be upset. Oh, uh, that just comes off really easy. Didn't even need the pry tools. There is some plugs for the ashtray and cigarette lighter, but I think you could just leave it set back here out of the side or twist it if need be. Just need to gain access to these bottom screws here. Screw on the right side, screw on the left side. So now the bottom is unscrewed, we're going to be careful and try to pry up on some of this stuff. The vents, I'm not sure if they need to be removed or not. Possibly. Oh, take that back. There it is. Couple plugs here on the back for the HVAC and there's a little tube there. You have to remove that to get rid of this faceplate. The clip is on the underside of these plugs. The little trim tool actually comes in very handy to get the two started. And then you just have to remove this tube without damaging it. You will need to remove the heating controls and air conditioning controls to put into the new faceplate. Just a couple bolts, one there, a couple underneath, another one over here. With the faceplate removed, you can see where the head unit needs to be removed. Two screws on this side, two screws on this side. 
careful when you're pulling it. The harness might be kind of tucked in here. And it'll just slide right out. Oh, drop one of those. That's always fun to find later. Just remember how many you have. Remove the antenna. Just remove everything on the back of this head unit so you can get it out of the way or maybe even throw it in the trash. With the head unit removed and the jumper harness unplugged, all the aftermarket stuff removed, your factory harness should look like this. These two plugs here, additional white plug, and a ground. You have your antenna, and then this is the HVAC tube. And that would be what you call starting from stage zero. The screws removed, the control head for the heating and air conditioning will come right out. Transfer it over to the I doing head unit. Put the four screws back in. Also transfer over these two white clips onto the I doing unit so that you don't get rattles and the unit will stay nice and secure. Controls transferred over, ready for uh, some plug and play action. If you go to the website, you'll get a little bit of a description of what everything is. You can just go over the wires and make sure you have everything. Um, we have the main harness that will plug in the, to the, the jumper harness, to the factory plugs. We have a GPS antenna here. If you choose to go that route, looks like a microphone. There is one, two, looks like three separate USB cables. RCAs, if you want to include or install an amplifier subwoofer. Um, I think this is like a modem and maybe um, an antenna if you want to if you choose to install 4g in the car and these are just some more audio video for the e-brake and things to plug in for like the, the rear camera all the plugs are really only going to go in one spot so just start plugging things in One down, many to go. If your rat's nest looks like this, you are actually on the right path to installing a tablet in your vehicle. Some of the stuff you might not use, like the GPS, 4G, extra USB ports, but we are gonna put everything in there so we have all of the options. Before putting everything back together, I like to give it a little test run to make sure it is working. Uh, looks like power's all there radio's there i haven't connected anything to my phone yet um bluetooth settings looks like it's functioning so the microphone will have to be ran somewhere not sure if i want to run it to the column over here or most people run it all the way across up here so it's closer to your voice still got to run that um, and the usb cables i'll probably end up just running into the glove box so that i have access to them um, and then, yeah, just gotta shove everything back together. But remember to run all of the long wires first. And I still have to remove this, which is the other navigation antenna that's still on the roof of the car. Kind of finagle it in there. Don't forget to plug in your HVAC controls. That thing is huge. Don't forget to put the two screws in the bottom and snap in your center console. My first recommendation is to go to settings, turn that keypad tone beep off. Right there, the first one, keypad tone off on. Oh, that beep drives me nuts. I'm gonna leave that off. All right, the most important piece of the install will be the Bluetooth. We got to discover it. Let's go to home, Bluetooth, turn on settings. SYU Android is what my phone is finding. Pin, it's asking for a pin. Uh, pairing password zero 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 pair looks like it's trying to connect shouldn't take very long and once the phone's connected 
you're gonna go into your settings yeah device go under apps and then you're gonna want to turn on tons of apps but the most important one is going to be this CarLink 2.0 open and then it's gonna connect to your phone only takes a few seconds and there we go now we have Apple CarPlay so the main home screen is where you're gonna find your startup really this is where your equalizer is you can pick whatever one there's there's some preset ones up here rock standard soft classic pop um, your listening preferences you could do bass enhancement um, it gets very complicated so um, usually just standard fields are probably the best for most users you can modify that if you choose right here is where the main app screen is so you have all these apps you can change them you can configure them however you want there's the Google Play Store we have YouTube um, you can turn on your hotspot if you want to tether and um, watch videos on the unit um, Play Store most important for most people will be the, the Carbit link or the CarLink 2.0 and right there is where um, the Apple CarPlay will be if you want it to turn on CarPlay or Android Auto automatically what you need to do is hit home um, let's see, let's go to the apps, CarLink 2.0 for the Apple CarPlay. And right here, it's trying to connect, but we're going to go to settings. And now here is where you'll see automatic connection. You're going to want to select that. That is on, that is off. So you're going to want to make sure it's on. And then when you do that, now every time you get in your car and turn it on, it'll automatically default to Apple CarPlay wirelessly.